Hello all. This is a hands-on exercise for module two. Uh, we're going to be exploring the Genesis Cloud Dashboard and Architect Interface. The objective here is to familiarize yourself with the Genesis Cloud Dashboard and Architect Interface uh, and navigate through the various menus and settings. So let's get started. Now, you will have to have access to at least a trial version of Genesis Cloud with login information um, and admin credentials in order to access Architect. Uh, when you do log in and you're in the admin profile, or the admin section, you will see that there is quite a few different objects objects that you can select. We're really going to concentrate on the architect piece of that. Prior to getting to that, though, in future modules, we'll be gonna, we're going to be going through analytics and um, reporting. Uh, the reports uh, tab here is getting deprecated, so every all the reports are going to be under workspace. So just kind of take a look at that, see what uh, you know, be able to navigate around that pretty well. Uh, we're going to concentrate on architect today, though. So as we open Architect, it's going to open up a new window. That way you still have access to the admin um, the admin piece on the, the other instance. Uh, and you kind of see when you open this up, you'll be able to see all your inbound call flows. You can switch between inbound call, um, message, email, chat, outbound call, and then obviously there's some supporting flows in there. So you can just switch. It'll switch it over. They have some default ones in the trial version. Um, if you have a production version, you might actually see something different. Uh, there's the prompts for system and user. From there, you can add prompts, um, edit prompts, um, that kind of thing. Uh, and then a dependency search. Let's say you are, for example, you need to do a dependency search on, uh, let's just select data table here. And since we know we have block numbers data table, uh, now you can kind of see what call flows are affected if you were to do something to that data table. So just keep that in mind. That's a great way to find out if you're trying to delete a call flow, uh, what is still dependent upon that call flow. Let's go back to inbound call. Let's just go ahead and open up. Uh, in a future module, we're going to actually start creating this, these call flows. And my first call flow is going to be one we create. So let's just open that up. That way we can kind of navigate around here. You get an idea of what's happening. Takes a few minutes to do that. Um, so this is not editable. This is, I haven't hit the edit button yet there are a few things that you can kind of look around at. So you see validate, um, validate is really good. Uh, you kind of see here that I have a few warnings. Uh, this doesn't prevent the, the call from being, uh, from being published, uh, but it's just a good reminder of, hey, you need to set some audio here or set some blank audio or whatnot. You can click on this, this is a button, and it will then go through and validate your call flow. Uh, always good to kind of do that prior to anything, uh, trying to publish anything, that way it ensures that it's being uh, that it is valid. Uh, you can export um, either as an I3 or a YAML file. This will allow you to import in another org, or if you want to import and start a new call flow based around this, excellent thing to export there. Um, the versionings allows you to see other versions. If you click on another version, it actually opens up a new window with that version there. It allows you to kind of do the same thing, export, um, that kind of thing, uh, if you need to um, refresh it or restore it from backup. Let's go ahead and close that. You can obviously save as, and that's just going to pull up another one. You can save it as a, a flow uh, and whatever. Let's go ahead and hit edit. And when you hit edit, it does now bring up quite a few more options. Uh, for example, in the save, you could just save as before. Now you have a lot of other options. You can check on the version. You can discard and save changes. You can revert to the previous version. You can try to delete it. Uh, you can import, export, that kind of thing. Versioning still the same. Uh, validate still the same. The one thing difference for publishing is you can either publish. Uh, there's also a debug here. This allows you to test this call flow without actually having a test number to test it. Uh, now you can only test this from internal, um, you know, from Genesis Cloud, but it does give you an address here. You can copy that address. You can come over to the admin th section, but then go to calls and dial pad, and now you're able to call and test that out in debug in debug fashion. We do, for this, this training module and the course, we do have a test number that we're able to call. And this is a test number you would actually be able to use. I have, I have purchased this test number. Um, now, granted, I'm on a trial version uh, of, the, of Genesis Cloud, so it may, uh, it may go away, depending on how that works. But to continue, you can kind of see along the left-hand panel right here, this is all of your options. So the starting task, this essentially is where when the caller calls that number, the first thing that they're going to see and what's going to happen, first thing that happens in this instance is we're taking a look to see if their number is on our block number data table. 
Um, and obviously there's some decisions there if it is, they're, they're disconnected, if not, it continues on. We'll touch that in a, in a later module, but just get yourself very familiar with this. Here's the settings piece of that. This sets like the default actions around where it's gonna go, what's going to happen, how much, how many seconds are we gonna do for timeout and whatnot. Uh, there's a good one there. Event handling, by default, this is disconnect, but if you want to, you know, you have a support queue that you want to forward every call to that for whatever reason there's an error that happens um, that's always a good way to do that uh, menu some default behavior the default is actually repeats menu three times and time out of 10 seconds typical standards in the industry is it'll repeat twice uh, with a five second timeout uh, supported languages there is all different types of languages um, keep in mind, some are not able to be used in text-to-speech, so you will have to record some audio for it. I think Russian is one of those things. Uh, there's more languages here, but there's the just the initial languages. You can also set it up with Amazon Polly or Google. Um, they have an en enhanced TTS feature uh, for Genesis Cloud as well. It's just come out um, that you'll be able to use. Right now, this uses the default text-to-speech engine. Speech recognition also by default is enabled. That can be disabled depending on, um, you know, your business needs and whatever, um, whatever they decide. Resources. This is really just um, variables that we're going to be using. Like I'm using call.annie and task.blocked right now, and that's really around the block number data table that I've created. Um, so as you start uh, adding more and more variables, that will show up here. It will also tell you in the usage where that's happening at. Give you kind of a brief description of some of those. Um, call that any is a system variable. Task that blocked is one I created. Prompts, this is all the prompts that are in here. Now this is a hard coded prompts. Uh, let's say you have a data table that you are calling to play a certain prompt. That won't be located in here. Just the prompts that are actually um, tagged in this call flow. Uh, dependencies, kind of think about the dependency piece uh, in the uh, when we were in the, the workspace for architect and how you see there was a dependency tab. This is kind of the same thing. What is dependent? You know, what dependencies are within this call flow? And then as we go through, here's reusable menus. So this is, you know, like right here, our main menu, our after hours menu. We're going to create these in later modules as well. But just keep in mind, these are for any menu options that you want to deliver to your to your customer. Um, that's where those will be stored. And then reusable tasks are any kind of tasks that you want. Maybe a schedule check you want to put in as, as, a, as a reusable task. Just so happens I have that there. And then deliver back. So it's whatever task you want done uh, and you want to be handled. Tasks can also, in another way, uh, be added to a menu. So I have this main menu here. Option one, these two are tasks that are happening within that menu. Uh, it's just You just store them within the menu as opposed to a reusable task. Moving on to the toolbox, the toolbox has, these are all the components uh, that we're gonna start talking about in later modules. These are the components, this is where you'll see them at. You can do one of two things, especially in published mode. You can click, go to toolbox, and then pick which one you want, or you have the ability to click and drag. Um, the extre extremely helpful either way, it allows you a couple different ways to, to add different components, but you can see there's audio, there's a call bot flow, common or common module. Uh, these two need to be set up prior to even adding them or they won't be there, uh, obviously, to select from. Uh, data is, you can call data action, there's a data table, you can click some kind of input from, um, from the person calling in, you can set and update data uh, that you can then use from an agent script perspective uh, or just later in the call flow to route. Dial by extension, disconnect, those are pretty uh, standard. Uh, external contacts, there is an external contacts that an organization that can be created in Genesis Cloud. This is just getting those, being able to set those in, in various ways based off of certain, certain items, mostly Annie, I believe. Uh, fine, <clears throat> this is one of those things where you are setting or finding um, different items, whether it's a, a group, um, a queue, a schedule group, a skill, like we're looking for those. Maybe you have a data table that you're calling and setting everything based off of a DNS. You know, you're setting the skills and the queues and all that. This is one of those things where we're going to go and find it uh, and pull it in and then set that as a variable. Flow, this is just about flow milestones, creating callbacks, setting screen pops, and screen pop is like the agent script, um, setting some kind of wrap up code. So you can set a lot of this by default. So that way when it gets to an agent, they're automatically um, prepared to take everything they need to, as well as being able to set the wrap up code. 
uh, logical. This is around decision making. So, you know, there's a decision that can happen. You know, we said about the block number data table, we put a decision in there to see if it was enabled. And then if it is enabled, it goes one route. Uh, if it's not enabled, it goes a different route. Evaluating schedules and schedule groups, same thing. Switches is really a decision, but it's a decision of two or more. Uh, if you if you want to think about it that way, if you have two or more, let's say open, closed, holiday, and emergency, this is kind of like a switch, really, because we're looking at schedules and depending on one, you know, which schedule is actually active is the route it's going to take. Loops. There's a lot of times where it makes more sense to instead of have a menu listed here, you have it as a as a task, and the menus within the task. Uh, looping kind of helps with that. Uh, let's say you, you know we want to let it repeat twice. You'd put a loop in there with a with a timeout of twice. It would then be able to loop within a task as opposed to a reusable menu. Menus. Um, this is, is simply put, you can add a menu through this way. You can obviously add a different a menu by clicking on this button here. Um, but that's just to add a menu. A jump to menu is a good way to, let's say I have a third menu here and it's a sub menu. And if it's open, I want it to jump to that menu. I'm able to then jump to that directly to that menu without having to do any any coding in the back end. A previous and repeat menu, that's pretty that's pretty self-explanatory. Just a quick way you can you can do this and drag it over here, and then all of a sudden you have an option to go to a previous menu. Uh, tasks, this is a excellent way you can add a task to any one of these three. A uh, jump to reusable task is more like this, and then you would just enter what task you want. Call task is another feature. Uh, it's not used a lot from my perspective. I did use it in this call flow, so in a later module, we'll actually review that. That way, you can kind of see the difference between task and, and call task. Uh, finally, transfer. Uh, that's just transferring to ACD, whether it's a queue or you're going to transfer to a user. Maybe you have an offshore support team that you have. You can transfer it to an external number. Um, if it's after hours, transfer to voicemail. So the next thing, uh, this obviously is your workspace right here. So let me go ahead and get these, uh, shrink these down. Here's your workspace. You'll be able to click and drag all over the place for it. You can, um, there's the window to, to zoom in or zoom out. The, the one to note here uh, on the right-hand side is that properties panel. So this, I have, for example, I have transfer to ACD or going to queue sales. So you're able to then set the queue. This right here is if you have some specific in queue call flow treatment you want. Let's say you have 30 seconds of music on hold, you play a message, and then you give them the option to leave a voicemail. This we'll create in the in queue call flow piece of that. Right now, we're just, um, this is just basic. Uh, we're leaving it at the, the default in queue handling. Here's that pre transfer and failed au transfer audio. So let's say for pre transfer audio, instead of putting the prompt here, you want to tag that all calls will be recorded. You could put that in pre-transfer audio. It'll play that prior to transferring into queue. Failed transfer audio, uh, a little bit of the same. Like let's say that default, um, the default method for whatever reason it did not work. It wasn't able to transfer it to to the sales queue. It's going to play a message and then follow this path out. So in this instance, it would then play a failed message here and then transfer to the after hours menu. Here you can give this call any kind of priority. There is quite a bit of priority from I believe. Let me see, one, two, three, four, 25, negative 25 million to positive 25 million. Um, that's just the priority that you're able to set on it. Uh, you could have a, you know, you could have a call in the in queue forever before getting answered at the negative 25 million, um, or you could have a very high priority at positive 25 million and obviously any digit in between those two. A uh, preferred agent is a, a really a variable that you're going to set on that uh to be able to get that this is not this that kind of is beyond this course uh we can take another course and cover that though um but that's beyond this course language skill let's say you have english and spanish um and they pressed one for english you can set that language skill here that will then allow um only the people that you've given that language skill to to answer that call ACD skill, not quite the same as language skill, obviously, but this allows you to then put, and I don't have any skills created, you can actually put a skill on this, so that way when it goes into the, into the sales queue, that the person or the person or people with that skill are only able to answer that. And then there's your failure outputs. Usually that uh, that is not usually messed with too often. So this is the, uh, this is the workspace for Architect, uh, Genesis Cloud. Uh, this may only take five or 10 minutes to kind of go over. Uh, take as long as you want. This thing is really here to get you started on the path to the later modules, which we will then create call flows, add data actions, 
uh, add, add uh, all different kinds of skills and groups and cues and whatnot in, in different paths. So get familiar with this and we'll see you in the next course. Thanks.